Chapter 1 of the Buddhist Catechism. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Buddhist Catechism by H. S. Olcott. Chapter 1 The Life of the Buddha. Question Of what religion are you? Answer The Buddhist. Footnote the word religion is most inappropriate to apply to Buddhism, which is not a religion, but a moral philosophy, as I have shown later on. But by common usage, the word has been applied to all groups of people who profess a special moral doctrine, and is so employed by statisticians. The Sinhalese Buddhists have never yet had any conception of what Europeans imply in the etymological construction of the Latin root of this term. In their creed there is no such thing as a binding, in the Christian sense, a submission to or merging of self in a divine being. Agam is their vernacular word to express their relation to Buddhism and the Buddha. It is pure Sanskrit and means approach or coming. And as Buddha is enlightenment, the compound word by which they indicate Buddhism, Buddha Gama, would be properly rendered as an approach or coming to enlightenment, or possibly as a following of the doctrine of Sakyamuni. The missionaries, finding Agam ready to their hand, adopted it as the equivalent for religion, and Christianity is written by them, Christian Agama, whereas it should be Christiani Bandana, for Bandana is the etymological equivalent of religion. The name Vibhaja Voda, one who analyzes, is another name given to a Buddhist, and Advayavadi is a third. With this explanation I continue to employ under protest the familiar word when speaking of Buddhistic philosophy for the convenience of the ordinary reader. Question. What is Buddhism? Answer. It is a body of teachings given out by the great personage known as the Buddha. Question. Is Buddhism the best name for this teaching? Answer, no. That is only a Western term. The best name for it is Bauda Dharma. Question, would you call a person a Buddhist who had merely been born of Buddha parents? Answer, certainly not. A Buddhist is one who not only professes belief in the Buddha as the noblest of teachers, in the doctrine preached by him and in the brotherhood of Arhats, but practices his daily precepts in daily life. Question, what is a male lay Buddhist called? Answer. An upaska. Question. What a female? Answer. An upasika. Question. When was this doctrine first preached? Answer. There is some disagreement as to the actual date, but according to the Sinhalese scriptures it was in the year 2513 of the present Kali Yuga. Question. Give the important dates in the last birth of the founder. Answer. He was born under the constellation Visa on a Tuesday in May in the year 2478 KY. He retired to the jungle in the year 2506, became Buddha in 2513, and passing out of the round of rebirths, entered Paranirvana in the year 2558, aged 80 years. Each of these events happened on a day of full moon, so all are conjointly celebrated in the great festival of the full moon in the month of Vesak, by Saka, corresponding to the month of May question. Was the Buddha God? Answer. No. Buddha Dharma teaches no divine incarnation. Question. Was he a man? Answer. Yes. But the wisest, noblest, and most holy being who had developed himself in the course of countless births, far beyond all other beings, the previous Buddhas alone accepted. Question. Were there other Buddhas before him? Answer. Yes. As will be explained later on. Question. Was Buddha his name? Answer. No. It is the name of a condition or state of mind, of the mind after it has reached the culmination of development. Question. What is its meaning? Answer. Enlightened. Or he who has the all-perfect wisdom. The Pali phrase is Sabanu, the one of boundless knowledge. In Sanskrit, it is Savajna. Question. What was the Buddha's real name then? Answer. Siddhartha was his royal name, and Gautama or Gautama, his family name. He was a prince of Kapilavastu, and belonged to the illustrious family of the Okaka, of the solar race. Question. Who were his father and mother? Answer. King Suddhodana and Queen Maya, called Mahamaya. Question. What people did this king reign over? Answer. The Sakyas, an Aryan tribe of Kshatriyas. Question. Where was Kapalivastu? Answer. In India, 100 miles northeast of the city of Benares, and about 40 miles from the Himalayan mountains. It is situated in the Nepal Tarai. The city is now in ruins. Question. On what river? Answer. The Rohini, now called the Kohana. Question. Tell me again when Prince Siddhartha was born. Answer. 
623 years before the Christian era. Question. Is the exact spot known? Answer. It is now identified beyond question. An archaeologist in the service of the government of India had discovered in the jungle of the Nepal Terai a stone pillar erected by a mighty Buddhist sovereign, Asoka, to mark the very spot. The place was known in those times as the Lumbini Garden. Question. Had the prince luxuries and splendours like other princes? Answer. He had. His father, the king, built him three magnificent palaces for the three Indian seasons, the cold, the hot, and the rainy, of nine, five, and three stories respectively, and handsomely decorated. Question. How were they situated? Answer. Around each palace were gardens of the most beautiful and fragrant flowers, with fountains of spouting water, the trees full of singing birds, and peacocks strutting over the ground. Question. Was he living alone? Answer. No. In his sixteenth year, he was married to the Princess Yasodhara, daughter of the King Suprabuddha. Many beautiful maidens, skilled in dancing and music, were also in continual attendance to amuse him. Question. How did he get his wife? Answer. In the ancient Kshatriya, or warrior, fashion, by overcoming all competition in games and exercises of skill and prowess, and then selecting Yasodhara out of all the young princesses whose fathers had brought them to the tournament, or Mela. Question. How, amid all this luxury, could a prince become all-wise? Answer. He had such natural wisdom that when but a child he seemed to understand all arts and sciences almost without study. He had the best teachers, but they could teach him nothing that he did not seem to comprehend immediately. Question. Did he become Buddha in his splendid palaces? Answer. No. He left all and went alone into the jungle. Question. Why did he do this? Answer. To discover the cause of our sufferings and the way to escape from them. Question. Was it not selfishness that made him do this? Answer. No. It was boundless love for all beings that made him devote himself to their good. Question. But how did he acquire this boundless love? Answer. Throughout numberless births and eons of years, he had been cultivating this love with the unfaltering determination to become a Buddha. Question. What did he this time relinquish? Answer. His beautiful palaces, his riches, luxuries and pleasures, his soft beds, fine dresses, rich food and his kingdom. He even left his beloved wife and only son, Rahula. Question. Did any other man ever sacrifice so much for our sake? Answer. Not one in this present world period. This is why Buddhists so love him, and why good Buddhists try to be like him. Question. But have not many men given up all earthly blessings and even life itself for the sake of their fellow men? Answer. Certainly. But we believe that this surpassing unselfishness and love for humanity showed themselves in his renouncing the bliss of Nirvana countless ages ago, when he was born as the Brahmana Sumedha, in the time of Dipankara Buddha. He had then reached the stage where he might have entered Nirvana had he not loved mankind more than himself. This renunciation implied his voluntarily enduring the miseries of earthly lives until he became Buddha, for the sake of teaching all beings the way to emancipation and to give rest to the world. Question. How old was he when he went to the jungle? Answer. He was in his twenty-ninth year. Question. What finally determined him to leave all that men usually love so much and go to the jungle? Answer. A diva appeared to him when driving out in his chariot under four impressive forms on four different occasions. Question. What were these different forms? Answer. Those of a very old man broken down by age, of a sick man, of a decaying corpse, and of a dignified hermit. Question. Did he alone see these? Answer. No. His attendant Channa also saw them. Question. Why should these sights so familiar to everybody have caused him to go into the jungle? Answer. We often see such sights. He had not seen them, so they made a deep impression on his mind. Question. Why had he not also seen them? Answer. The Brahmana astrologers had foretold at his birth that he would one day resign his kingdom and become a Buddha. The king, his father, not wishing to lose an heir to his kingdom, had carefully prevented his seeing any sights that might suggest to him human misery and death. No one was allowed even to speak of such things to the prince. He was almost like a prisoner in his lovely palaces and flower gardens. They were surrounded by high walls, and inside everything was made as beautiful as possible, so that he might not wish to go and see the sorrow and distress that are in the world. Question. Was he so kind-hearted that the king feared he might really wish to leave everything for the world's sake? Answer. Yes, he seems to have felt for all beings so strong a pity and love as that. Question. And how did he expect to learn the cause of sorrow in the jungle? Answer. 
by removing far away from all that could prevent his thinking deeply of the causes of sorrow and the nature of man. Question. How did he escape from the palace? Answer. One night when all were asleep, he arose, took a last look at his sleeping wife and infant son, called Channa, mounted his favourite white horse, Kanthaka, and rode to the palace gate. The divas had thrown a deep sleep upon the king's guard who watched the gate, so that they could not hear the noise of the horse's hooves. Question. But the gate was locked, was it not? Answer. Yes. But the divas caused it to open without the slightest noise, and he rode away into the darkness. Question. Whither did he go? Answer. To the river Anoma, a long way from Kappa Velastu. Question. What did he then do? Answer. He sprang from his horse, cut off his beautiful hair with his sword, put on the yellow dress of an ascetic, and giving his ornaments and horse to Channa, ordered him to take them back to his father, the king. Question. What then? Answer. He went afoot towards Rajagra, the capital city of King Bimbisara of Magadha. Question. Who visited him there? Answer. The king with his whole court. Question. Thence whither did he go? Answer. To Univella, near the present Mahabodhi temple at Buddha Gaya. Question. Why did he go there? Answer. In the forest were hermits, very wise men, whose pupil he afterwards became, in a hope of finding the knowledge of which he was in search. Question. Of what religion were they? Answer. The Hindu religion. They were Brahmanas. Question. What did they teach? Answer. That by severe penances and torture of the body, a man may acquire perfect wisdom. Question. Did the prince find this to be so? Answer. No. He learned their systems and practiced all their penances, but he could not thus discover the cause of human sorrow and the way to absolute emancipation. Question. What did he then do? Answer. He went away into the forest near Uruvela and spent six years in deep meditation, undergoing the severest discipline in mortifying his body. Question. Was he alone? Answer. No. Five Brahmin companions attended him. Question. What were their names? Answer. Kondanya, Badia, Vapa, Mahanama, and Asaji. Question. What plan of discipline did he adopt to open his mind to know the whole truth? Answer. He sat and meditated, concentrating his mind upon the higher problems of life, and shutting out from his sight and hearing all that was likely to interrupt his inward reflections. Question. Did he fast? Answer. Yes, through the whole period. He took less and less food and water until it is said he ate scarcely more than one grain of rice or of sesame seed each day. Question. Did this give him the wisdom he longed for? Answer. No. He grew thinner and thinner in body and fainter in strength until one day as he was slowly walking about and meditating, his vital force suddenly left him and he fell to the ground unconscious. Question. What did his companions think of that? Answer. They fancied he was dead, but after a time he revived. Question. What then? Answer. The thought came to him that knowledge could never be reached by mere fasting or bodily suffering, but must be gained by the opening of the mind. He had just barely escaped death from self-starvation, yet he had not obtained the perfect wisdom, so he decided to eat, that he might live at least long enough to become wise. Question. Who gave him food? Answer. He received food from Sujata, a nobleman's daughter, who saw him sitting at the foot of a Nyagroda, a banyan tree. He arose, took his arms bowl, bathed in the river Niranjara, ate the food and went into the jungle. Question. What did he do there? Answer. Having formed his determination after these reflections, he went at evening to the Bodhi, or Asvata tree, where the present Mahabodhi temple stands. Question. What did he do there? Answer. He determined not to leave the spot until he attained perfect wisdom. Question. At which side of the tree did he seat himself? Answer. The side facing the east. Question. What did he obtain that night? Answer. The knowledge of his previous births, of the causes of rebirths, and of the way to extinguish desire. Just before the break of the next day, his mind was entirely opened like the full-blown lotus flower. The light of supreme knowledge or the four truths poured in upon him. He had become Buddha, the enlightened, the all-knowing, the savajna. Question. Had he at last discovered the cause of human misery? Answer. At last he had. As the light of the morning sun chases away the darkness of night and reveals to sight the trees, fields, rocks, seas, rivers, animals, men and all things, so the full light of knowledge rose in his mind, and he saw at one glance the causes of human suffering and the way to escape from them. Question. Had he great struggles before gaining this perfect wisdom? Answer. Yes. Mighty and terrible struggles. He had to conquer in his body all those natural defects and human appetites and desires that prevent our seeing the truth. He had to overcome all the bad influences of the sinful world around him. 
Like a soldier fighting desperately in battle against many enemies, he struggled. Like a hero who conquers, he gains his object, and the secret of human misery was discovered. Question. What use did he make of the knowledge thus gained? Answer. At first he was reluctant to teach it to the people at large. Question. Why? Answer. Because of its profound importance and sublimity, he feared that but a few people would understand it. Question. What made him alter this view? Answer. He saw that it was his duty to teach what he had learnt as clearly and simply as possible, and trust to the truth impressing itself on the popular mind in proportion to each one's individual karma. It was the only way of salvation, and every being had an equal right to have it pointed out to him. So he determined to begin with his five late companions, who had abandoned him when he broke his fast. Question. Where did he find them? Answer. In the deer park at Isipatana, near Benares. Question. Can the spot be now identified? Answer. Yes. A partly ruined stupa, or dagoba, is still standing on that very spot. Question. Did those five companions readily listen to him? Answer. At first, no. But so great was the spiritual beauty of his appearance, so sweet and convincing his teaching, that they soon turned and gave him the closest attention. Question. What effect did this discourse have upon them? Answer. The aged Kodanya, the one who understood, Anna, was the first to lose his prejudices, and accept the Buddha's teaching, become his disciple, and enter the path leading to a hardship. The other four soon followed his example. Question. Who were his next converts? Answer. A rich young layman named Yasa, and his father, a wealthy merchant. By the end of three months, the disciples numbered sixty persons. Question. Who were the first women lay disciples? Answer. The wife and mother of Yasa. Question. What did the Buddha do at that time? Answer. He called the disciples together, gave them full instructions, and sent them out in all directions to preach his doctrine. Footnote. Brahmanism not being offered to non-Hindus, Buddhism is consequently the oldest missionary religion in the world. The early missionaries endured every hardship, cruelty, and persecution with unfaltering courage. Question. What was the essence of his doctrine? Answer. That the way of emancipation lies in leading the holy life and following the rules laid down, which will be explained later on. Question. Tell me what name he gave to this course of life. Answer. The Eightfold Path. Question. How is it called in the Pali language? Answer. Ario Athangiko Mago. Question. Whither did the Buddha go then? Answer. To Uruvela. Question. What happened there? Answer. He converted a man named Kashyapa, renowned for his learning and the teacher of the Jatalas, a great sect of fire worshippers, all of whom became his followers. Question. Who was his next great convert? Answer. King Bimbisara of Magadha. Question. Which two of the Buddha's most learned and beloved disciples were converted at about this time? Answer. Sariputra and Moggallanya, formerly chief disciples of Sanjaya, the ascetic. Question. For what did they become renowned? Answer. Sariputra for his profound learning, Prajna, Moggallanya for his exceptional spiritual powers, Idi. Question. Are these wonder-working powers miraculous? Answer. No, but natural to all men and capable of being developed by a certain course of training. Question. Did the Buddha hear again from his family after leaving them? Answer. Oh, yes. Seven years later, when he was living at Rajagra, his father, King Suddhodana, sent a message to request him to come and let him see him again before he died. Question. Did he go? Answer. Yes. His father went with all his relatives and ministers to meet him and received him with great joy. Question. Did he consent to resume his old rank? Answer. No. In all sweetness, he explained to his father that the Prince Siddhartha had passed out of existence as such, and was now changed into the condition of a Buddha, to whom all beings were equally akin and equally dear. Instead of ruling over one tribe or nation like an earthly king, he, through his dharma, would win the hearts of all men to be his followers. Question. Did he see Yasodhara and his son Rahula? Answer. Yes. His wife, who had mourned for him with deepest love, wept bitterly. She also sent Rahula to ask him to give him his inheritance as the son of a prince. Question. What happened? Answer. To one and all he preached the Dharma as a cure for all sorrows. His father, son, wife, Ananda, his half-brother, Devadatta, his cousin and brother-in-law, were all converted and became his disciples. Two other famous ones were Anuruddha, afterwards a great metaphysician, and Upali, a Baba, afterwards the greatest authority on Vinaya. Both of these gained great renown. Question. Who was the first bhikkhuni? Answer. Prajapati, the aunt and foster mother of Prince Siddhartha, 
With her, Yasodhara and many other ladies were admitted into the order as bhikkhunis or female devotees. Question. What effect did the taking up of the religious life by his sons, Siddhartha and Ananda, his nephew Devadatta, his son's wife Yasodhara, and his grandson Rahula, have upon the old king Suddhodana? Answer. It grieved him much, and he complained to the Buddha, who then made it a rule of the order that no person should thenceforth be ordained without the consent of his parents if alive. Question. Tell me about the fate of Devadatta. Answer. He was a man of great intelligence and rapidly advanced in the knowledge of the Dharma, but being also extremely ambitious, he came to envy and hate the Buddha, and at last plotted to kill him. He also influenced Ajatashatru, son of King Bimbisara, to murder his noble father and to become his, Devadatta's, disciple. Question. Did he do any injury to the Buddha? Answer. Not in the least, but the evil he plotted against him recoiled upon himself, and he met with an awful death. Question. For how many years was the Buddha engaged in teaching? Answer. Forty-five years, during which time he preached a great many discourses. His custom and that of his disciples was to travel and preach during the eight dry months. But during the season of the way, the rains, he and they would stop in the pansulas and the viharas which had been built for them by various kings and other wealthy converts. Question. Which were the most famous of these buildings? Answer. Jetavanarama, Veluvanarama, Pubarama, Nigrodarama, and Isipatanarama. Question. What kind of people were converted by him and his disciples? Answer. People of all ranks, nations and castes, rajas and coolies, rich and poor, mighty and humble, the illiterate and the most learned. His doctrine was most suited to all. Question. Give some account of the decease of the Buddha. Answer. In the forty-fifth season after his attaining Buddhahood, on the full moon of May, knowing that his end was near, he came at evening to Kusinagara, a place about 120 miles from Benares. In the Sala Grove of the Malas, the Upavatana of Kusinagara, between two Sala trees, he had his bedding spread, with the head towards the north according to the ancient custom. He lay upon it, and with his mind perfectly clear, gave his final instructions to his disciples and bade them farewell. Question. Did he also make new converts in these last tours? Answer. Yes, a very important one. A great Brahmana Pandit named Subhadra. He had also preached to the Malya princes and their followers. Question. At daybreak, what happened? Answer. He passed into the interior condition of Samadhi and thence into Nirvana. Question. What were his last words to his disciples? Answer. Bhikkhus, he said, I now impress it upon you the parts and powers of man must be dissolved. Work out your salvation with diligence. Question. What convincing proof have we that the Buddha, formerly Prince Siddhartha, was a historical personage? Answer. His existence is apparently as clearly proved as that of any other character of ancient history. Question. Name some of the proofs. Answer. 1. The testimony of those who personally knew him. 2. The discovery of places and the remains of buildings mentioned in the narrative of his time. 3. The rock inscriptions, pillars and dagobas made in memory of him by sovereigns who were near enough to his time to be able to verify the story of his life. 4. The unbroken existence of the Sangha which he founded and their possession of the facts of his life transmitted from generation to generation from the beginning. 5. The fact that in the very year of his death and at various times subsequently, conventions and councils of the Sangha were held for the verification of the actual teachings of the founder and the handing down of those verified teachings from teacher to pupil to the present day. 6. After his cremation, his relics were divided among eight kings and a stupa was erected over each portion. The portion given to King Ajatashatru, and by him covered with the stupa at Rajagra, was taken less than two centuries later by the Emperor Asoka and distributed throughout his empire. He, of course, had ample means of knowing whether the relics were those of the Buddha or not, since they had been in charge of the royal house of Patna from the beginning. 7. Many of the Buddha's disciples, being arhats, and thus having control over their vital powers, must have lived to great ages and there was nothing to have prevented two or three of them in succession to each other to have covered the whole period between the death of the buddha and the reign of asoka and thus to have enabled the latter to get from his contemporary every desired attestation of the fact of the buddha's life eight the mahavansa the best authenticated ancient history known to us records the events of sinhalese history to the reign of king vijaya 543 bc almost the time of the Buddha, and gives most particulars of his life, as well as those of the Emperor Asoka and all the other sovereigns related to Buddhistic history. Question. By what names of respect is the Buddha called? Answer. 
Sakya Muni, the Sakya Sage, Sakya Simha, the Sakya Lion, Sugata, the Happy One, Sathta, the Teacher, Jina, the Conqueror, Bhagavat, the Blessed One, Lokanatha, the Lord of the World, Savajna, the Omniscient One, Dharmaraja, the King of Truth, Tathagata, the Great Being, etc. End of chapter 1.